Hello everyone, welcome to a Render Spaz video tutorial and today we're going to show you how you can render your own jewelry shots within 3D Studio Max and V-Ray. Uh, what I have here is a tungsten ring that I've created, very simple, uh, and then I've uh, pretty much duplicated one over and laid them out as you see in front of you here, um, just to kind of get a cool stylized shot. And went into uh, V-Ray, used the frame buffer and uh, used the effects to get the bloom and everything. Uh, use some depth of field within uh, V-Ray's uh, physical camera. And uh, I'm going to go through the scene and I'm going to show you how this was done. So uh, let's get to it and I'll show you how the modeling process started. All right, so what we've done was uh, to model the ring, we used a tube. All right, so we just drag it out of the screen. I'm not really worried about uh, scale at this moment. I uh, just want to get something laid out. All right, so we started off with a tube. Um, we make sure our angle snaps are on, and I go through here and rotate to 90 degrees. All right, so I'm just gonna briefly go over uh, with the modeling process here. I'm not going right in depth with it, but uh, you'll definitely uh, get the idea here uh, based off this. So um, 36 sides, we don't need all these height segments for now. We can just go with that. So we're gonna convert this to an edible poly. I'm gonna select the inner, uh, these uh, edges here on the face, okay? We're gonna hit ring. We're gonna hold control and click uh, left mouse button on the uh, polygon option here, and that gives us the selected face that we're looking for. All right, and what we're gonna do is uh, we can inset, all right? So this will give us a Oops, got that all mixed up there. Let's go back. Get that uh, poly. All right. Let's inset. Just to get some close here. All right, and then from there, we're going to extrude. We want to make sure that we're on local normal. We'll bring ourselves down here. Too big. Okay, we can use a scale tool if we like and just bring this in. Okay, it's just so it's not too, you know, for like this, it's going to be too hard of an edge, but you could do that. I mean, jewelry could be designed in uh, various ways. All right, once you have that, we can then go to the faces here, both sides, select each edge, hit ring. We'll connect. Now we have a nice uh, edge going across the middle there. So we're going to loop this guy. I'm going to do this uh, freestyling a little bit here, a little bit of uh, let's go by eye. Grab that one, hit loop. Let's go to a left view here. So we match this as close as we can get it. Okay. Perspective. I'm going to go over the grid off for now. We're going to need an edge on this, on these two panels here, or sorry, on these two edges, these inner edges here. We're going to loop, one chamfer, okay, and that'll give us some, uh, let's see here, 261, sure. Okay, so this is pretty good. We brought that out. Um, you might want to create an edge on this here, on these two edges, edge or chamfer. So I hit loop on both sides, okay? We hit chamfer, this will give us a nice bevel. Okay, let's see, maybe uh, something like that. So anyway, if we apply the turbo smooth, you can see that we have a ring starting to come about. I grab this edge, it needs uh, some kind of, needs a little bit of tightening. I'm gonna show you in real time here what's going on. So if I grab that edge and I hit loop, and then I do a chamfer, you're gonna see it's gonna tighten up the edges here. Okay, so there we go. So it's because I put it to one, uh, you can see now tighten it up, and now we have this beveled edge. All right, um, 
You can get very detailed with this. You can select these edges as well. Okay, hit loop and chamfer. Let's put an edge there. We need that one. That, should, that sounds pretty good. That gives us that nice edge. Okay, this is good for detailed shots. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's straightforward. That's how we've um, created the ring in that sort of style, that technique, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our scene and I'm gonna show you how I placed everything down and how I set up the whole entire scene. So what we have is the ring, pretty much what we've created uh, just now. Uh, but what I've done was I, let's get out of there, and go into the perspective mode here. Um, so I laid it down in 90 degrees and then I duplicated one of the rings over and I just manually moved each of the, uh, this one here, just manually moved it and placed it down. And I want to make sure that uh, it stays on the floor. Okay, so here's our floor. So if I go to the left view here, you just want to make sure that they're not singing through the floor. They're laying on each other there. Okay. Okay, so as we go over the scene, we're going to take a look at the materials of uh, what's driving these rings and what they are all about. So if we hit the material editor, we're going to have, we have two areas. We have the face here that I've detached, okay? And we have the outer and inner areas here of the ring that's also a separate piece. This way, they both have their own UV uh, map coordinates uh, set in. So one we're going to look at is the dots. That's where our mask is and if I um, view this you can see that these are a mask that we created with a black and white um, mask or alpha to open these up we reveal them in uh, the explorer here let's bring this across you can see I'm using this mask as a, uh, a way to drive our um, this tungsten kind of look, not tungsten, but more or less of a uh, pewter, uh, etched pewter uh, piece here. And this is we're using the V-Ray blend material to create that um, that look. So if uh, I want these uh, to be completely chrome, I could do that by adjusting the reflection glossiness here. So that's all that is. So if I go 0.75, I'm going to make it a little bit more etched, have more roughness to it, and that's what separates. Uh, the two here so we have the chrome in the back and then we have the etched circles here and that's the uh, dot mask that's what's driving this so without this if you were to turn this guy off okay you get nothing so go back to 100% uh, when you go to apply you want to make sure that you click and have a bitmap and then use this mask to control and it cuts out the two uh, blends okay uh, the, the base materials are chrome, which is our diffuse, it's black, zero, set down, reflect is, uh, is white, 100%, and then our reflection glossiness is 0.95. We just get a little bit of uh, softness to our chrome. And that's pretty much what drives our materials here. Okay, so you guys can uh, check out the scene, uh, play with this setting if you want. Uh, you can even change out the pattern if you want it to be something different. Uh, you can you can do any kind of black and white pattern if it's tileable and you're using the select this here let's go to our UV map make sure that your tiling is set you can set uh, whatever you want here and how much you want of the tiling so if if, uh, if you want smaller dots I can bring this down like so I can use the U tile and just drag it through and I can get smaller uh, dots okay. And I just like that setting for now. I'm just going to keep it as is, but that's pretty much what's driving um, that, uh, this face here. The inner face and the inner part of the ring is the same deal, but this time we have a logo that's in the inner part. This is where it says tungsten. Um, that's what's pretty much behind here. Let me just turn this on. And that's what you see this logo here, okay? And that's also driven by a UV map that um, you can control the height and whatever it is that you want. Uh, if you want to rotate it, uh, you can do so. I wouldn't do the U tile, I would actually just rotate the gizmo, okay? 
okay so if you want to rotate it I can hit the move up here uh, and I can rotate this logo in any way shape or form and this is cutting out um, see here this is what's cutting out it's, it's the same tech uh, same material okay this is the dots uh, that's pretty much that brownish color that we're using here okay uh, we also have the 0.75 that's the same one applied here okay uh, this is 0 0.69 this is actually supposed to be 75 so that's an error there fix that <laughs> and then um, that's going to etch into the inner part here so that's what gives us that cool uh, two uh, two layer material here and that's what the V-Ray blood material does so you just treat this as almost like it, it is a Photoshop so um, that's pretty much it that's what drives that um, and it's uh, it's pretty straightforward take a look at the file again the, the, uh, the project file and uh, you can see for yourself how that works now the other thing about the tungsten is that um, we make sure the output was inverted because when I created it, I didn't do the black. I, I made the tungsten black and the outer and the uh, background is white. It's supposed to be the opposite, so I just inverted it. Uh, and I'll show you. So if I invert this back, uh, we would get the roughness instead. And you can see this is the tungsten would be chrome. Pretty cool look, uh, but we want that to be the opposite. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, for the material part. Um, no, I'm not finished yet. I still have to show you a couple more little things here um, <clears throat> and what I've done to go about it. Um, I used one single V-Ray dome light. Okay, That's all I've used. Um, I made sure that we are using full dome Okay, in the uh, dome light options. We come up, make sure it's invisible here. Um, you don't want to see the light here. And uh, I don't want not to see the light. I don't want to see the, uh, the actual HDR in the shot. Okay, if you don't see it anyways, because our camera's angled down. Um, and then I attached the V-Ray HDR to our dome, which is here. Okay, and that's provided in the in the file. We're using the spherical uh, the mapping type, and uh, you'll see that in our project files as well. So we click on the the dome light. All I did was drag this guy in and uh, let it go as an instance, okay? And that will now control our lighting and it will control our reflection. And we make sure our resolution is quite correct to put it about 3000, okay? Subdivisions here of the sampling is at 16. It's usually default by eight. I just cranked that up just to get some uh, really nice uh, shadows and uh, not so grainy, okay? Our render setup is straightforward. We go into the V-Ray, uh, let's just let's break this all down. So to do um, image sampling here, we use adaptive. I don't put any image filtering on. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty much cranking our render settings so that I don't have to use that. I can soften the render up in the post if I need to. Max subdivisions are at 16. Okay, global DMC 001. Um, that will help with the noise. That takes it right down. Uh, our global illumination is turned on. We have primary engine using brute force. And our secondary is, engine is light cache. Okay, I just leave light cache as is. Okay, I don't touch that. It's at a high setting, 1,000. Um, you could actually just speed things up. Use uh, for glossy rays. I'm going to put that on, um, which I should have had on. Brute force um, is set to 24 subdivisions, so it's very high, uh, but it gives us a nice, a nice look there. If you want, you could go with the iridescence map, but I'm going to go with brute force. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, maybe pick up our memory a bit. Okay, I got 24 gigs of RAM. I'll use 1600 for now. That's fine. I'm not going to use it all up. And uh, put out whatever output it is that you want. Hit render. And there you have it. All right? Actually, no. One more thing. Let's go to the camera settings. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So our camera settings, um, now this is going to be a little different. Um, when we look at it, we're at f-stop 22, okay? I'm actually avoiding the exposure controls and the vignette. So I took those off and I'm going with my own kind of uh, just kind of outrageous numbers here. But uh, depending on your scene scale, 
your depth of field is going to be different. So um, for now, I'm going with the 22. Okay, um, this shouldn't have a tone shift at all. I don't know why that did. Okay, focus distance. Um, what I'm doing is I am making sure that this blue grid is our focus point. That's where everything's going to be sharp. And then these uh, two other uh, grids that are lighter blue are going to be the outer focus. It's when it starts to leave, okay, where the sharpness is. Uh, and that's where it starts getting mushy. Okay, so here um, we're going to keep it sharp. And if I change this number, so this will be less sharp, or sorry, less uh, depth of field, but as I bring this closer together, um, it starts to tighten up, okay? So I'm just controlling it like that, and I know that I'm gonna get a real nice depth of field, a nice macro shot, it's gonna look quite nice. Um, I went to our white balance as a neutral, our blades are at five, our sampling depth of field is turned on, make sure that's on to get the effect, and uh, our shutter speed is set up to five, it's very low. So these are very, these are different numbers, um, but it's, it's getting the look that I want, and uh, I'm just going to go with it. Not a big deal. So I hit Control, or uh, sorry, C for uh, the camera. And uh, once we snap back in, hit Render, uh, now we're good to go. Uh, and then pretty much from there, we have the bloom controls that we turn on. I uh, have these settings, and that will give us the bloom that effect that we have. So i got to try to pull that Render back up. Okay, you can see it now I have the bloom uh, that gives us a little bit of uh, nice highlights and uh, looks a little bit dreamy. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I did a little bit of curve correction. Um, nothing, uh, nothing very fancy there. It's just uh, turned out to be a nice render. Our depth of field is looking really nice. And that's it, guys. Uh, check out the um, project file. Let me know what you think. Try to create your own. Uh, and um, yes, best of luck with it. And I uh, hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, stay tuned for more tutorials, a lot of stuff on the plate uh, at renderspaz.com. So stay tuned for some more updates, and uh, we'll catch you guys later. Thank you.